Well, hello YouTubers. Welcome to another video uh, from Specialty Repairs Video Productions. Hey, that sounds kind of cool, don't it? And a mouthful. Anyway, uh, it's Saturday and uh, we were supposed to have like four or five days of rain and this morning it was just terrible. And it was pouring rain, it was drizzle, it was foggy, it was cold. And now it's mild and it's sunny. So again, the forecasters got it wrong. Thank you, forecasters. They're the only people that consistently get their job wrong and still keep their job. Anyway, today we're going to talk about the BX bucket. And this one, as you noticed, is a, a little bit different and a little bit unique from the normal BX bucket. Uh, last week we did a video where we showed the uh, feature, the Solo Shot 2, uh, the robotic uh, cameraman. And uh, I just happened to take the BX out and uh, do a demo with the BX going around the back of the property. And of course a lot of people noticed the cutting edge on the BX. So we got a lot of emails, we got a lot of uh, comments on the video about the, uh, about the cutting edge and asked if we could do a, a video strictly on the, uh, or specifically on the cutting edge. So that's what this is about. Now this is not just basically uh, directed at the BX. It can be on any tractor without a cutting edge. It will apply to all tractor buckets. Now, the reason why I put a cutting edge on this bucket was to eliminate what I call the happy face bucket. And the happy face bucket is something that I'm after seeing so many times over the years here at Specialty Repairs. We get guys dropping off their buckets, the, uh, the original cutting edge that's welded into the bucket has been worn out and beat up and dented up um, to the point where it was just, you know, in a matter of a year it was destroyed. Then you get what happens is you get them worn out, then you get guys picking up rocks or trying to root something up and the bucket is so thin it starts to develop a sag in the middle of the bucket. And if you put the bucket up in the air, it would look like it was smiling at you. So that's why I call it the happy face bucket. So when we bought this tractor new, one of the very first things that I decided that I was going to do was put a cutting edge on it. Now, the problem is with finding a cutting edge is Kubota or anybody else, John Deere, anybody, do not make cutting edges for this small a bucket. So I found a way around it. What I did is I went to the dealer, the Kubota dealer here in Newfoundland, and I said, give me a cutting edge to, uh, or just tell me the, the short, the, the narrowest cutting edge that you have. And anyway, he looked it up in his book and he came back with one that was probably, I can't really remember, but it was probably eight or nine inches longer than this bucket. So, or wider than this bucket. So. I bought that cutting edge and when you buy the cutting edge you get the, uh, the bolts with it as well and uh, so I came back and uh, I decided to put the cutting edge on the tractor and I'm going to tell you this tractor has got 105 hours on it. It's, it's, it's a very low hour tractor but those 105 hours she worked big time and you can refer back to her other videos and you'll see it worked pretty good. There's a lot of rock here in Newfoundland and you look down at that bucket and there's not even a dent in it. And the reason why? The cutting edge. There's no sag in it. There's no happy face. The only happy face you'll see on this tractor is me sitting in the seat. So uh, it was a very well worthwhile um, mod. Now the other problem that I have with doing this video is that when I was doing this mod, or first when I bought this tractor, this tractor was supposed to only be here for a year and then we were going to resell it and, and just forget about it. But Kathy kind of liked the little tractor and once I got it, I developed a terrible disliking to a pick and a shovel. So this is replacing our picks and our shovels and our wheelbarrows. So we decided to keep it. But then I developed an interest in modding it out, designing and fabricating and building 
certain modifications to the tractor. And, and of course, you guys will look back at the, uh, at the previous uh, videos and you'll see there's dozens and dozens. I think we're up to 48 or something now, different modifications that were never done to a BX before. But I still consider the bucket mod the most beneficial to the tractor. So what I'm going to do, seeing I never had a video done at the time of the, uh, of the mod, I, I was taking a lot of pictures. Like, I have 100,000 photos on three hard drives in our office. And uh, I take photos of everything. Any job that I do, there's multiple photos of it. So I went in to the computer, and I went into the hard drive, and I found a few pictures of how this job was done and I put them on my little thumb drive and I'm going to add these to this video and what I'm going to do I'm going to do the next best thing to a, a video I'm going to do a photo but it's going to be a voiceover so I'm going to show you the photo I'm going to do the voiceover and it's going to show you exactly explain to you exactly what I did and why I did it and of course it'll show how it turned out so I hope it'll be beneficial to you. Uh, at the end of the video, you're going to see uh, a tag. And the tag is a Kubota part number. And that's the part number for that specific cutting edge. The thing is with the cutting edges, uh, when you get them, if you think it out right and you plan your job properly, uh, what you're going to do is you're going to take your cutting edge and you're going to center it exactly where it's going to be. The center bolt is going to be in your bucket. You're going to have to cut probably, I'm just guessing now, four inches off each side of that cutting edge. Now, excuse me, the, the cutting edge is very hard. And you're going to see that I used a uh, metal cutting bandsaw, but I used it with... Uh, cutting fluid and it had no trouble cutting it. Now if you don't have that you can also use a, uh, a cut off disc or cut off grinder or cut off saw you know but you know be careful I would rather use the metal cutting band saw it gives you that really nice true cut and, it, uh, and it's a lot cleaner and it's a lot nicer when it's done. Now the reason why you would center up your cutting edge is because make sure that the center bolt of the cutting edge uh, is dead center with your bucket and the reason for that is is once this cutting edge wears out front you can take all your carriage bolts out or your cutting edge bolts out and you can turn it 180 degrees and you've got the other side of your cutting edge to use as well so you know you get basically two cutting edges for the price of one and I'm gonna tell you something guys like this cutting edge on a BX will last for years and years. Look, you won't even remember putting it on when you got to turn that thing around. That's how hard that cutting edge is. Uh, there's not even indents in it. And I mean, I've been bringing up in rocks and everything with this thing. There's no bows in it. It strengthens, it strengthens the bucket. Does it have any downside? Yes, it's probably 40 pounds added to the bucket. But you know, I'm gonna tell you something. I'd rather have the 40 pounds on the bucket then have the bucket wearing out and have to bring it to a guy like me who's going to charge you probably a half a day's labor to sort it all out and then you're still going to have to put the cutting edge on it. So, you know, do it right the first time and you won't have to revisit that particular problem. So what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to go in, I'm going to uh, upload the photos, we're going to do the voiceover and uh, then we're going to come back and I'll show you exactly what this looks like underneath after a hundred hours of work and uh, that should give you some idea of uh, what you need to do to put a cutting edge on a BX. Before we get to that I will tell you that unfortunately when you put the cutting edge in the right position on the bucket you're going to be right on the weld line of the original welds of the bucket. Now that creates a bit of a problem. Anybody with cheap drill bits need not apply, because I'm going to tell you something. 
you're going to be welding, you're going to be drilling through a weld and it looks like it's a MIG weld and MIG weld is a very, very hard steel. That wire is terribly hard. So my advice to you is when you go to uh, drill them out, you drill them out, you start, start off in small increments and you use the top quality drill bits that you can get, okay? None of this uh, $10 stuff from, you know, your big box stores. You know, you go get yourself a good industrial drill bit and use lots of cutting fluid and you'll have no problems. But if you try to cheapen it and you try to use no cutting fluid and you try to use a cheap drill bit, it's a, it's a disaster waiting to happen. And also when you're drilling through a hard metal with the cutting fluid, slow RPM. Don't have your drill going flat out because it's going to burn up the bit. That's going to be about the hardest part of the job is getting through that. Once you get through that, you'll have no problems. Now, if you want it to move the, uh, if you want it to move the cutting edge ahead just a little bit, maybe a half an inch, you could avoid that. The only thing is, is you'll have your cutting edge sticking out a half inch further. Now that won't, wouldn't be a problem for most people, but um, there's going to be a second part to this particular mod that I just haven't done yet, and I'm going to build a tooth bar to fit over this cutting edge while it's on that bucket. So that'll kind of be neat, and it's only going to be held on with two bolts, and it's going to be a 10 minute thing to put on and take off. So uh, that's the reason why I tuck the cutting edge in a little bit. It kind of looks nice, and for anybody who don't know BXs, they would think that this came like it. Uh, the bolts are going to be a wee bit longer than they need to be, so you just cut the, the tops off them once it's done, and you'll be able to take them off no problem. So uh, I'm going to head in. I'm going to uh, upload the photos, and then I'm going to come back, and I'm going to tip this up, and I'm going to show you exactly what it looks like underneath and that way you'll have a better idea of what you're in for. Okay guys this is voiceover time. As you can see this is the BX bucket when it was brand new and uh, without any modifications whatsoever. Okay here's the new cutting edge laid up against the uh, OEM bucket and as you can see I have it centered and I have uh, a good bit to cut off on each side. I'm guesstimating about four inches on each side but uh, you can see exactly what's involved here now with this picture. Okay, now it's chop chop time. This is what separates the boys from the men. Anyway, as you can see, I'm using the uh, horizontal bandsaw and uh, it has a built-in cooling system. And uh, there's one thing about this, this particular saw. When it cuts, it cuts straight, it cuts true, it cuts square, and it makes a nice clean cut. So I would advise anybody to uh, use this type of tool to do this type of job. In this photo you can see that the uh, cutting has started and uh, that white milky stuff, well that's actually uh, water soluble oil cutting fluid. And uh, you need that to keep the blade cool and lubricated while you're trying to cut this, uh, this particularly hard uh, cutting edge. So. Uh, make sure that you use your uh, cutting fluid. And here are the results. As you can see, it's a very, very clean cut, smooth cut. Uh, the blade is still good. And, uh, you know, it's uh, the picture speaks for itself. The right tools for the right job makes the job uh, even more successful. So if you can, you know, if you don't have one of these tools, get somebody to cut it for you. It's not a big job by any means. Okay, now that the cutting edge is cut, it's time to do the install. So, I'm fortunate enough to have the uh, quick attach for the front bucket on the BX25D. It was an option, and of course we got it. So it was time to let the bucket go and uh, get ready to uh, drill it out. Well, I guess the only thing you're not going to see is uh, me actually drilling the holes, but, you know, you see one hole drilled, you see them all drilled. So you basically have to make sure you use a good drill bit, make sure you use lots of cutting fluid, and uh, put your drill on slow speed. Don't over rev your drill bit, you're going to burn it up. And you can see the uh, actual cutting edge mounted and how it looks at the bottom of the bucket. And uh, 
it looks pretty cool. It's a, it's a nice bucket now. Well, here you go, folks. This is what it looks like. Turned out pretty good. The uh, width is exactly the same width as the OEM welded on cutting edge that was on the bucket. The bucket is much stronger. It, uh, it won't have a smiley face on it now. It will last many, many years longer and it just looks appropriate for the machine. Um, of course, now there's been other modifications done to the bucket since, as you'll notice when we come back to the actual tractor, but uh, I think it turned out pretty good. For those who were wondering what the part number was for this particular cutting edge, here it is. And uh, this is a Canadian part number from a Kubota dealership, a Canadian Kubota dealership. So I don't know if this part number will be in the American system, but uh, they might be able to cross reference it for you. Okay, now I'm sure after seeing those photos, you got a better idea of what needs to be done. The little tag is, uh, represents the part number. That's a Canadian part number, folks, so I don't know if, it, if it's going to be the same part number for a, uh, an American Kubota number. But uh, just measure up your, the width of your bucket. I'll do it for you, and we'll see. Um, let me see here. So the bucket is roughly 47 inches. It's a little bit under 47 inches wide. So you'll probably be going, you're probably going to end up with a 60 inch cutting edge. So like I say, center it up so that you'll be able to reverse the cutting edge when you want to uh, change it over. Let's put up the bucket and we'll have a little look at it. you can see this good maybe what I'll do sorry guys I'm gonna move the camera over a little bit so see if you can see that well yeah okay so as you can see it's uh, there's no wear on it look you know and it's got a hundred hours of scuffing now I'm gonna tell you you know our ground here we call the island of Newfoundland the rock and there's a reason why we call it the rock because it seems like that's all there is is rocks so the bucket is very, very, very strong. It's, uh, it's just been a great addition. You don't want to come out too far past the outside of the bucket. Um, I actually kept it the same width as the welded on cutting edge that came with the bucket and it kind of gives it a factory finish. But look, there's not even a dent in that. It's great for back filling. It's great for uh, uh, grading, you know. It's not so good for rocks, but then again, it was never good for rocks even before this cutting edge was put on. You know, teeth are the best thing for, for hard digging. But you know, uh, for strength, I'm gonna tell you folks, you're never gonna beat this uh, cutting edge. And again, you know, this applies to all tractors. So let's put her down. I'm gonna show you a couple other things that I have done with the bucket. And uh, So with the bucket here, you'll also notice that, uh, here, I'll back this camera up a bit, folks, or maybe I can turn her down a bit. There you go. I'm sorry about being so rough with the camera, but it is what it is. You're going to notice that with this bucket here, I have what they call a spill guard. And I used to work at heavy equipment one time, and I was an operator. I had 20,000 hours operating big heavy equipment the big stuff guys in open pit mining, iron ore mines and uh, everything that we had had a spill guard on it so naturally when I bought this I put a spill guard on it when this bucket goes up and tilts right over you could actually dump gravel on your hood now you can't with this spill guard I'm gonna back this up a bit folks so you can uh, see it a bit better there you go yeah, so you can see the spill guard there better now. And, uh, and it's been very beneficial. So if there's any interest in the spill guard, maybe later on I can do a video on how I did the spill guard. So 
just let us know if there's something that you're interested in. Now, a lot of people ask about the hooks. I'm trying to cover all this now because I know that this particular, um, this particular video is going to create a lot of questions. So I'm trying to avoid answering a lot of questions. Uh, you're going to see hooks inside. And why are the hooks inside? Well, I'll tell you. With the spill guard on there, you would put the hook on the other side and your sling would come over, and I really didn't like that. Uh, I'll tell you, I'm kind of skittish when it comes to using slings or nylon straps or chains when I'm uh, pulling anything. When it goes over your, uh, the lip of your bucket and it breaks, it could flick back and it could hit you. By putting the hooks inside, when you're towing or you're pulling and you're yanking on something, you use the bucket as your guard. That's your protection. You're basically behind the wall. You'll have that up by your, up in front of your line of view, and if something breaks, you know, the bucket is there to protect you. You know, you've got a better chance of uh, not being hit with this bucket up and the chain or the sling or the strap inside the bucket. That's how I feel. I know people are going to debate it, but everything that I've ever been on have always had the hooks inside the bucket. I used to haul on cables with a 988 cat and a 992 cat that were an inch and a half in diameter. We used to tow belts, uh, uh, rubber belts, conveyor belts that were 200 feet long and that weighed tons and tons and tons and they were towed by hooks inside the bucket. So guys, be careful out there. Keep that in mind. Fellows will say, yeah, but things get caught up in it. Sand get ah, That's crap sand. Nothing gets caught up in that. You know, well, it's always been that way. So that's the reason why the hooks are there. Um, so, the, you know, there it is. There it is in the Campino no Tizzer. It's, uh, you know, it's a great bucket. It's a lot stronger. Even with this uh, spill guard on there, it's much stronger. Uh, yes, it's a little bit heavier, but you know what? I, I'll sacrifice a little bit of uh, weight for the, the safety of the tractor and myself. I remember one time in a 966 cat loader without a spill guard, we picked up a lump of snow. I was traveling over towards the Mack truck that I was loading and the lump of snow came over the bucket, came down and took the windshield completely out of the loader. And uh, it was a warm loader, one of the rare ones we had that were warm. And the windshield came in and cut up all my arms. So. Uh, after that, they put spill guards on everything to avoid that issue. So, you know, you live and you learn, folks. So, there it is. So, I hope you enjoyed the uh, video, and uh, I'll try to answer all your comments. Uh, last week, I made a mistake. I put up three uh, videos to one time. Not going to do that anymore. Too many comments. But anyway, uh, so you should be more educated now when it comes to a uh, cutting edge and why you would put one on. Later on, if you want, I'll do one on the spill guard and I'll show you exactly how it looks before, during, and after the, the job. And uh, that's about it, I guess. Uh, I'll probably put a little bit of a bonus uh, video at the end of this one. I had to go repair a dump truck yesterday. You don't get to see the dump truck itself because uh, it was just, well, Kathy had to stay here and I, I had to fill up the uh, the truck with or the van with a pile of specialized tools and I'll explain that during the bonus part of the video. So again, thanks for your comments and uh, thanks for your interest because it's nice when people email and post and say, you know, can you show us how you did this and you know, it's, it's, we, we take it as a compliment and we also take it as, well, at least you folks got interest in our channel, so, which is nice, you know. We try to make it as interactive as we can but I can tell you we got about 20 emails and posts concerning this uh, cutting edge and uh, people wanting to know how I did it and why I did it. So, uh, you know, when you get that kind of uh, response, it's worth doing a video for. And we enjoy it. That's what it's all about. So, folks, you guys have yourself a real good weekend. Please don't go texting and driving. It's, it's killing people on the roads. And uh, we'll try to get some more videos out during the week. Tomorrow we're going to take a little break. Uh, got a few things to do. If it's like this around the door now, I'm probably going to do a bit of a spring cleanup and start putting our summer stuff out. And 
We got a concrete dog that we usually put on the lawn. He's been in the shed so long, he's starting to whine. So what do you do? You know, folks, you guys take care of yourself. Good luck. God bless. What you doing? I see all kinds of stuff being loaded. I got to go and work on a dump em truck. Em. <laughs> a dump em truck? A em. dump em truck. Em. Hmm. Dump yeah. truck. Huh? Translation, dump truck. Well, it's, brand, it's, well, it's a fairly new international, and uh, it's been parked a while. And, uh, they can't get it to dump, they can't get the brakes uh, off it. It's got an air leak, and they've had a few people looking at it. They can't figure it out, so. I'm going to take my smoke pro. Mm. Oh, that reminds me, I had to get my, uh, my kit, my forensic kit going back. Forensic kit? I got a forensic kit going So, you had a smoke machine, sir, for, for leaks, right? Yeah. This is, I call this my CSI kit. Yeah. Oh, it smells so nice. This baby, uh, baby oil. Oh, it is. Yeah, so I'm going to use baby oil to diagnose a dump em truck em. <laughs> Yeah. Actually, anybody who's in the automotive business would recognize these things as a diagnostic tool for checking for uh, pressure leaks in fuel systems. But I've adapted this particular system to many, many types of jobs, including looking for water leaks in vehicles, water leaks in, in uh, fuel cells, water leaks in just about anything. And what I do is, uh, if there's a water leak, I'll take this, which is filled with baby oil. Make sure I got baby oil up there now. And, uh, yeah. And what I do is I apply a pound PSI pressure to it. I plug it into a 12 volt uh, AC uh, battery. And I put this uh, smoke machine on, or this hose on. Uh, introduce, well, I introduce this hose into the system, into the tank, into the fuel line, or into the gas line, or into the uh, air line in this case. And then I hit the button. The, and as they said on one of the videos, the button. Button? Yeah. And then, I, and then that, that'll light up red. And then I just turn on the smoke. And I'm going to tell you, like, it smokes big time. And it'll fill this place with smoke in a minute. But anyway, uh, then there's a special light there that I use to track down where the smoke is coming in. But I'm hoping this is going to work on the airline system. I don't know if they can hear the ear. But, but the problem is, the truck was running, uh -huh. you know? Now, if, I was, if the truck was here, I would just apply shop air to the system, mm -hmm. and then I would hear it coming out. But now I don't have that much air, so I'm going to use smoke. And it comes with special cones and stuff, and, you know, and little adapters, and, you know. And then there's stuffs like that, more stuffs. That'll, that'll replace a gas cap, see? So, so now that you, you were nosy enough to come out with the friggin' camera, are you happy? Oh yeah, very. So very I'm gonna happy. go and see if I can diagnose and fix that problem so they can use their dump and truck them. Already, I, I don't know how I get involved in this stuff, but I do. Yeah. So we have couriers coming and customers coming, so you've got to stay here. I got to stay here. So I lose my photographer, my solo. Solo shot. This is a solo shot. You know, solo, yeah. solo shot too. Won't mm -hmm. be able to tag along because this is more than two thousand feet away. <laughs> <laughs> True. Right? Yeah. Well, that's it. So, I'll have to walk it. There it is. There it is. Fan's warm. I gotta go to work. Gotta go to work. Go to work. Oh, your back's so had to make out. All done. It had two problems. Oh. <laughs> it had two problems. Yeah, what do you think? You know, I had to come back. I didn't know. You come over there sometimes with the camera. I had to do an update. It uh, it wouldn't dump. The problem with the power take off, and uh, couldn't build up air pressure for the brakes or the main tank. So that was a uh, relief valve. So I got all that done, and they're very very happy. Wow. 
And I was lying in the mud, so my other jacket is pretty in rough shape. Of course it is. Then, of course, I didn't realize I had that much mud on me, yeah. and I sat aboard this fairly new truck with little vinyl seats. Mm -hmm. And, of course, when I got out of the truck, I was horrified. <laughs> And the driver said, ah, don't worry about that. And I said, no, no. So I had, I had taken rags with me. And you had the uh, car care kit oh, in the back okay. of the van. The back, yep. So I washed up the cab. And he said, well, you're at that. Now you might as well do the passenger seat and everything. <laughs> that's what Terry's like. Yeah, yeah that's right. So we had a good bit of fun. And, yeah. True. So it worked out good. I'm glad it wasn't cold. Nice. You know, it wasn't windy. It wasn't raining. So bonus. So, <laughs> and now we can now, use it. Now, yeah, and they can, they can use it this weekend. I gotta put away all my tools. Right it's kind of like a good meal, but you gotta do the dishes. Oh, that's not good. Same thing. Same anyway, thing. All right. that's it.